praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never went after that dream. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what talents, what books, what music, what leadership, what voice will die with you? Miles Monroe, great orator speaker, said the wealthiest place on the planet is not in the Far East where there's oil in the ground. It's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. But you're there you'll find greatness that we've never seen. There you'll find talent and genius and potential never actualized. Perhaps that's why Henry David Thoreau wrote the words, Oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Maybe that's why some unknown writer wrote the words, What if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? That it was wrong. That you were chosen to do something else. And you didn't do it. Repeat after me, please. Live full. Die empty. I want you to take some notes and some things, and I want you to think about your goals and dreams in the three categories that I mentioned, personal, professional, and your social contribution. How many of you are serious about your goals and dreams? Raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. How many of you don't want to take your dreams to your grave with you? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Shake someone's hand on your right and left. Look them in the eyes and say, get out of your head and step into your greatness. Do that right now, please. Say, get out of your head and step into your greatness. I want you to write this down. Let us say together, as you think about your goals and dreams, let us say together, it's possible together, please. Yes, write that down. See, ladies and gentlemen, as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. It's my 21st year. I could have been speaking and training for 34 years, but for 14 years, I was living in my head. For 14 years, I stopped myself. For 14 years, I used to go see Zig Ziglar, that I considered the number one motivational speaker on the planet. Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins, they're the best on the planet. Bob Proctor, they're the best on the planet. Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, T. Hob Eckert. I would go and see them and then I would leave, and my conversation with myself was, my heart would say, I can do that. And then my mind would ask, how? How would you do that, Les Brown? See, when I was in the fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled educable mentally retarded. Put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. I failed again when I was in the eighth grade. I have no college training. And a man changed my life, and I'll never forget his name, Mr. Leroy Washington. He's in his 80s now, and, and he's blind from glaucoma, but he, he gave me a different vision of myself. I was in his class waiting on another student. He came in and said, young man, go to board and work this problem out for me. I said, oh, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, I'm, I'm not one of your students. He said, look at me. Yes, sir. Go to the board and work the problem out anyhow. I said, sir, I, I can't do that. He said, why? I said, sir, because I'm educable, mentally retarded, sir. I'm in special education. And the students started laughing. They said, that's Leslie. That's not Wesley. He's DT. Wesley is the smart twin. He said, what does DT stand for? I said, um, I'm the dumb twin, sir. And as the students laughed at me, he came from behind his desk. He looked at me and he said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. On one hand, I was humiliated, but on the other hand, I was liberated because they look at me with the eyes of Gerda who said, look at a man the way that he is, he only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. 
And so we developed a relationship. And one of the things that I can just tell you as you think about your goals and dreams, all of us can say in the spirit of integrity that it's possible. That if anybody at any point in time lived that dream, then it's possible that I can live mine. And what I did was, I made a mistake. I looked at my goals and dreams, and my mind said, how will you do that? I went to my heart, 